All right, so in today's video, what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be making every single team's best player a 99 overall in NHL 24. Wait, what? I was supposed to say that NHL 24 is the greatest video game of all time? In the greatest video game of all time, NHL 24. How was that? Was that better? No? I'm not getting paid? What? That is right, boys. I've went through the entire NHL and made every single team's best player the highest overall possible in the game, which is a 99, which honestly might not help as many teams as you expect. Like a team like Edmonton, they're not really going to change that much because Connor McDavid is basically a 99 overall. He's a 97 in the game. But teams that are, you know, maybe not as good and don't have the greatest overall players, their best player is going to take a huge jump and become like an absolute stud in the NHL. So that could actually help them go on and make the playoffs or maybe even win a Stanley Cup. And this is all after a weekend of cocaine with Connor Bedard. I mean, look at those eyes. Those are definitely telling a story. The dude is cracked out right now with all the pressure on him. I don't blame him. But I mean, come on, EA. That dude looks like he was snorting that white snow all goddamn night. But he showed up. He showed up in his first NHL game and he scored in his second. So hats off to Bedsy. All right. So let's take a look at every single player that I made a 99 in NHL 24. First off, for Anaheim, I made Trevor Zegras a 99, but he's not even here. I honestly have no idea where he's at. For the Arizona Coyotes, I had to go with Clayton Keller. He's obviously their best player. For the Boston Bruins, we obviously have David Pasternak, 99. He's 27 years old. Pass is only 27? Now, for Buffalo, it was going to be Tage Thompson, 25 years old. The Calgary Flames is going to be Elias Lindholm. For the Hurricanes, it's going to be your mom's a ho, Sebastian Ajo. Still very young, 26 years old. A lot of these players are actually surprised young. Now, for Chicago, it was technically Seth Jones, but we all know that Connor Bedard is the best player on that team. I'm sorry, but after watching their first two games, it's very clear. When Bedard is on the ice, things happen, and when he's not on the ice, things don't happen. He's better than Taylor Hall, and he's definitely better than Seth Jones. Now, for the Colorado Avalanche, McKinnon and McCarr were technically tied at a 95 overall, but I do believe Kale McCarr is the better player in real life, so I put him up to a 99. This simulation is going to be absolutely nuts. Now, we got for Columbus, we have Johnny Hockey. He's 30 years old, 99, obviously. He's got franchise potential. For the Dallas Stars, it's going to be Jason Robertson. For the Detroit Red Wings, we have Dylan Larkin, 27 years old. For Edmonton, obviously, it's going to be Connor McDavid, 26 years old, the best player in the game, but now he has a lot more competition because a lot more players are going to be a 99, like Matthew Kachuk we have here on Florida. Drew Doughty for the LA Kings. Drew Doughty's probably one of the oldest players here. Minnesota's going to have Kirill Kaprizov. Damn, Kaprizov is 26 years old. The Montreal Canadiens, it's going to be Nick Suzuki, their captain. Nashville, obviously, is going to have Roman Yossi. He's also 33. Damn, I did not know Roman Yossi was that goddamn old. I guess maybe because of his beautiful face, I think he's a lot younger than he actually is. Hey, yo, pause. Now, for the New Jersey Devils, obviously, it's going to be Jack Hughes. He's obviously their best player. For the Islanders, I went with their goalie, Ilya Sorokin. For the New York Rangers, it was not going to be Breadman. Instead, it's going to be Igor Shosturkin. I believe he is their best player. Now, for for Ottawa, we have Timmy Stu, the 21-year-old, very young. For Philly, there wasn't a lot of choices here, but I did go with Sean Couturier. I mean, who else would have gone with? Pittsburgh, obviously, it's going to be Sid the Kid, Sidney Crosby, 36 years old, so I don't know how much this is actually going to matter. For San Jose, we have Tomas Hurdle. For Seattle, I went with Vince Dunn. He's a 99. Now, St. Louis is going to have Jordan Cairo, who's still very young, 25 years old. Now, for Tampa Bay, I did decide to go with Kucherov. I mean, he was technically one higher overall than Vaz. Now for Toronto, as much as Matthews had a down season last year, he is still a better player than Mitch Marner, so he had to be him. For Vancouver, we have Elias Pettersson, still very young as well, 24 years old. For the Vegas Golden Knights, Jack Eichel is going to be their best player. For Washington, I had to go with the great eight, Alex Ovechkin. And for the Winnipeg Jets, it's got to be Connor Hellebuck at a 99 overall, 30 years old. All right, so now that we know every player that I have adjusted here, hopefully Trevor Zegers gets signed to Anaheim and it works out like that. Let's go on and find out who is going to win the Stanley Cup over the course of the next five seasons in the new NHL with every single team having a 99 overall player. Listen, if you guys do enjoy videos like this, make sure you hit the like button and subscribe to the channel for more content like this. We have a juicy one here in today's video, boys. Enough talking. It's time to find out who is going to go on and win that Stanley Cup. So at the end of year number one, the New York Islanders are going to finish first in the NHL, winning 54 games. Them in Colorado 
Colorado were tied, but they did have more overtime losses, two more points in general. Other than that, though, Toronto was up there, Florida, Pittsburgh, Minnesota, and the Anaheim Ducks finishing top seven in the NHL. If we take a look at the bottom of the NHL, we still have Arizona, Detroit, Nashville, LA was down there, and Vegas, who are the defending champs. Kaprizov is going to lead the NHL in points with 124, followed by Kucherov's 119. Dreisaitl was up there with 116. Trevor Zegras had a very big season, 60 goals, 114 points. McDavid was up there as well. Bedard had a very good rookie season, 58 goals and 112 points. He was a minus five, but we're going to ignore that. Timmy Stu was up there. Alex Ovechkin, Kale McCarr had 34 goals and 108 points at a 99. Johnny Hockey was up there. Matthews, Patrick Kane. Why is Patrick Kane simming so well? He's only an 89 overall, but he's hanging up here with literal 99 overall players. Now for goals, Jason Robertson is going to lead the way with 61, followed by Kaprizov, Ovi, and Zegras. They all had 60 apiece. So we ended up with four 60 goal scorers in the NHL this season, followed by Bedard's 58. Matthews was up there. Kucherov at 55. Your mom's a hoe, 48. And Sean Couturier, 48 goals and 95 points on the season. If we take a look at defensemen here, other than Kale McCarr, Carlson would be up there. Quinn Hughes had 83. Victor Hedman, 78. Is going to lead all goaltenders and wins with 45. Followed by Stuart Skinner's 40. Connor Hellebuck also had 40. I believe the only goalies that we actually messed with was Sorokin and Hellebuck. So every other goalie should be pretty much the same, I'd say. If we take a look at the shutouts, Tristan Jari is going to lead the way with five. And in the Stanley Cup final, we have a rematch of 2006 between the Edmonton Oilers and the Carolina Hurricanes. We have McDavid versus Aho. Dreisaitl versus I don't even know who else. Maybe Sveshnikov, I guess. Regardless, who is going to go on and take home that Stanley Cup in year number one? And despite the fact at the start of the video, I said Edmonton was not going to benefit much from this. They're going to go ahead and prove me wrong. Winning the Stanley Cup in year number one as they defeat Carolina in the Stanley Cup final. Honestly, I, I don't know what else to say. I was wrong, I guess. But I mean, this is the outcome that is going to happen in real life. So I'm not that surprised. Speaking it into existence, baby. And there it is. The Stanley Cup being presented to the Edmonton Oilers. Here comes our captain, Connor McDaddy. I mean, Connor McDavid coming to lift the Stanley Cup for the very first time in his NHL career. He finally gets it done. I believe like eight years in to his NHL career, he finally gets to lift Lord Stanley. Now for the entire playoff run, Sebastian Ajo is actually going to lead the NHL in points with 32, followed by Connor McDavid's 31. So McDavid was not far behind. Svechnikov at 29, Drysaddle was up there, Marty Natchez, Tara Vinen, and there it is. The Edmonton Oilers are Stanley Cup champions, baby. Exactly what's going to happen in real life. Come back to me at the end of the year, boys. I promise you Edmonton will be lifting that Stanley Cup. Leon Drysaddle is going to take on the Ted Lindsay and the Hart Trophy, while the Art Ross is going to go to Kaprizov and the Maurice Richard to Jason Robertson. The Norris is going to go to Kale McCarr, the Lady Bing to Bedsy, the Calder also to Bedard, and the Con Smite to Connor McDavid. The Vezna is going to go to Linus Allmark, and the Selkie is going to go to Sean Couturier. Now, let's take a look at the standings after the end of year number two. Tampa Bay is actually going to be the best team in the NHL with 53 wins, followed by the New York Rangers. Boston was up there, Pittsburgh, and Dallas. Toronto was up there, Florida. Where the hell are the defending champions? Edmonton Oilers. Edmonton! No way. Okay, at least we made the playoffs. But man, after winning the Stanley Cup, we just said screw the regular season. 43 wins, 35 losses, and four in overtime. Now at the bottom of the NHL, we have the Philadelphia Flyers, the Montreal Canadiens, and the San Jose Sharks. Nashville and Chicago was also down there. Jason Robertson is going to lead all skaters in points with 121, followed by Austin Matthews, 116. Patterson was up there at 114. Kucherov, Kaprizov, your mom's a hoe, had 112. Johnny Hockey, 111. Sid the Kid, Crosby, 64 goals and 110 points. Miko Rantanen had 110. Mitch Marner was up there. Clayton Keller 105. I'm guessing Dreisaitl and McDavid didn't have a big year. Bedard was up there 105. 46 goals. McDavid a 99 overall. Can't even crack 100 points in a single season. That is something special. Now if we take a look at the goals here. Oh my god. Austin Matthews scored 77 goals in 82 games. Followed by Robertson 65. Kaprizov had 65. Jesus. Crosby was up there. Pedersen. Alex O'Reilly. 
Ovechkin had 59. Your mom's a hoe had 57. Miko Ranton was up there. Jack Eichel, 49. But god damn, Austin Matthews. A revenge season for him. 77 goals in 82 games. That is wild. Now, for defenseman, Drew Doughty is going to lead the way with 98 points. Also, 25 goals. Followed by Kale McCarr's 89. Adam Fox at 85. Charlie McAvoy was up there. Quinn Hughes as well. Now, for goalies, Vassy's going to tie for wins. Him and Igor Shosturkin would each have 45 apiece. Vassy still a 93, but Igor is a 99. Jake Ottinger was up there. Sergei Bobrovsky had 40 wins. Now, for shutouts, Freddie Anderson's going to lead the way only with four. It was a, like a seven-way tie here. And in the Stanley Cup final, we have the Tampa Bay Lightning versus the St. Louis Blues. All right, so I guess we have a battle of the former Stanley Cup winners. 2019 for St. Louis and, of course, 2020 and 2021 for Tampa Bay. Let's see who is going to take home that Stanley Cup in year number two. And the Tampa Bay Lightning are going to make a comeback in the Stanley Cup finals. They were down 3-1. Yes, down 3-1 to St. Louis. I Honestly, I was shocked too. But they are going to rally three straight victories and go on and win the Stanley Cup in year number two. I was kind of worried for a while there. I mean, St. Louis, no disrespect to you, man, but... You guys did not even deserve to be here. Braden Point is going to take home the con Smythe for the Tampa Bay Lightning. 10 goals and 30 points in the playoffs. So very well deserved. He was probably their leading goal scorer. Maybe at least scorer. Maybe Kucherov had more goals because we know that Kuch is an absolute sniper in this game. And there it is. The Stanley Cup yet again being raised in Tampa. Four Stanley Cups. Actually, no, three Stanley Cups. Three Stanley Cups in the Stammer era. Five Stanley Cup finals. Definitely 100% a dynasty. There is Steven Stamkos. Might not get an extension in real life, but it doesn't matter here in NHL 24 because he's yet again a Stanley Cup champion. For the third time in his career, he's going to lift the Stanley Cup. Now, for the entire playoff run, Jordan Cairo is actually going to lead all skaters in points with 33, followed by Buchnevich's 32. Braden Point did have 30. Kucherov, yeah, he did have more goals, 15 compared to Braden Point's 10, but Braden Point is still going to win the con. Smythe, Miko Ranton was up there. Robert Thomas, Stammer had a big season or big playoff run, I should say. Nathan McKinnon, Austin Matthews is going to take home the Ted Lindsay and the Maurice Richard. The Art Ross is going to go to Jason Robertson and the Hart also to Matthews. Drew Doughty is going to win the Norris, the Lady Bing to Johnny Hockey and the con. Smythe to Braden Point. The Vesna is going to go to Igor Shosturkin and the Selkie will go to Elias Lindholm of the Calgary Flames. Now at the end of year number three, the Carolina Hurricanes are going to be the best team in all of hockey. 51 wins on the season, followed by Toronto, who had 50. Winnipeg was up there. The defending champs, Tampa Bay, had 48 wins. New Jersey, Florida, Calgary, New York, Vancouver, and LA were all up there as well. Let's take a look at the bottom of the standings. We have the Seattle Kraken, finishing dead last in the NHL with 62 points, followed by Arizona, Montreal, Chicago, and Columbus. I actually did think some of the bad teams would actually perform a lot better, considering now they got, like, the best player in the world, or one of the best players, a 99 at least. But maybe I was wrong. Maybe it doesn't really affect affect the NHL that much. I mean, we saw Edmonton win it in year number one last year, Tampa Bay, but St. Louis did get help from it because St. Louis normally does not make the Stanley Cup final in simulations. I am speaking straight Japanese right now, boy. Sebastian Ajo, your mom's a ho, is going to lead the NHL in points with 118, followed by Nikita Kucherov's 114. David Pasternak was up there. Johnny Hockey, 113. Jack Hughes, 110. Ovechkin was up there. Jason Robertson, Austin Matthews, and Sid the Kid Crosby, 107 points, also 51 goals. EA, man, you guys need to get your shit together. Connor McDavid simulates like straight ass in this game. Now for goals, Matthews and Kucherov are going to tie for the most at 60, followed by Ovi's 57, past at 57. Trevor Zegers was up there at 56. Jason Robertson, Sean Couturier had 54. Your mom's a hoe, 53. And Crosby, of course, 51. Now let's take a look at defensemen. 38 goals and 106 points by Roman Yossi. That is crazy. Drew Doughty was up there. Eric Carlson, Dougie Hamilton, and Quinn Hughes. Now for goalies, Freddie Anderson's going to lead the way for wins with 44 followed by Demko, Markstrom, Samsonov, and Hellebuck. And of course, for the shutouts, Igor Shosturkin is going to lead in five. Actually, him and Freddie Anderson would each tie at five. Igor, man, oh my god. Those stats are terrible. He's a 99 overall, and he can't even crack a 900 save percentage and a three goals against average. That is tough. And in the Stanley Cup final, we have Colorado versus Carolina. The Hurricanes did make it back in year number one, but lost to Edmonton, so they are definitely out for revenge here, and Colorado looking to collect another Stanley Cup Cup. Let's see who 
goes on and takes it home in year number three. And the Colorado Avalanche are going to go on and win the Stanley Cup in game seven of the Stanley Cup final. Carolina yet again is going to fall in the final. That is crazy. Carolina fans, you guys must be damn bad right now as yet again, Colorado is going to take home another Stanley Cup. They won it in 22. And now here in year number three of the video, another Stanley Cup headed back to the Windy City. The Windy City, that, that is Chicago. I don't even know what I'm talking about. And the greatest player of all time and Nathan McKinnon is going to take home the con. Smythe, 16 goals and 27 points. That is Nate Dog, baby. Mac Daddy in the playoffs is an absolute train. And sadly, the Stanley Cup is going to have to be raised here in Carolina as their fans are going to have to sit and watch the Colorado Avalanche. At least in year number one, it was in Edmonton, so their fans didn't have to sit here and witness this. But here's their captain, Captain Gabriel Landeskog, who is actually going to be out for like two years in real life. But he's here in NHL 24, lifting that Stanley Cup yet again for a second time in his NHL career as the Colorado Avalanche have gone all the way in year number three. Your mom's a hoe yet again is going to lead all skaters in points for the playoffs, this time with 28, followed by Mac Daddy's 27. Elias Pedersen was up there. Nikita Kucherov had a pretty big playoff run. Kale McCarr, 25. Rantanen, 23. Seth Jarvis. So yeah, I guess the Conn Smythe was deserved for McKinnon, but I mean, Aho, man, is going off in the playoffs right now. Sebastian Aho is going to take home the Ted Lindsay, the Art Ross, and the Hart Trophy, while Nikita Kucherov is going to win the Maurice Richard. The Norris is going to go to Roman Yossi, the Lady Bing to Mitch Marner, and the Conn Smythe, of course, to McKinnon. Freddie Anderson is going to take home that Vesna, and the Selkie is going to go to Sean Couturier yet again. At the end of year number four, the New York Rangers are going to be the best team, winning 52 games, followed by Toronto, Buffalo, Ottawa, Boston, and the defending champions, the Colorado Avalanche, baby. Detroit was also up there, a big year from them. Vegas has a comeback. They were like dead last in year number one, or at least, I don't know, top four or bottom four, I should say. Now at the bottom of the NHL, we have the Philadelphia Flyers, the Vancouver Canucks, who literally just pounded my Oilers eight to one in their home opener, which is wild. I don't know what went on that game, but we're going to ignore that. Paige Thompson is going to lead the NHL in goals with 65 and points with 123, followed by Jason Robertson's 114. Trevor Zegers had a big year again. Elias Lindholm, Timmy Stu, David Pasternak. I mean, all the 99 overall players are here. Crosby, big year from him, 50 goals. Matthews yet again scoring 60. Now for goals, other than Tage Thompson, Jason Robertson is going to lead the way with 64, followed by Matthews at 62. Elias Lindholm, 59. I never thought in a million years I'd say Elias Lindholm has scored 59 goals on the season. Kaprizov was up there. Connor Bedard, 53. Eichel, 52. Ovechkin, 51. And Crosby, 50. Now for defensemen, Roman Yossi's going to lead the way. 25 goals, 98 points. Kale McCarr also had 98. Drew Doughty, 93. And Dalene, 90. And for goalies, Sam Sonoff's going to have the most wins at 42. Followed by Jari's, 41. And Shesterkin also at 41. Now if we take a look at the shutouts, Connor Hellebuck is going to have the most. Actually, him and Sorokin would each tie at six apiece. Bobrovsky had five. Hofer had four. Joel Hofer. And in the Stanley Cup final, we have the highly anticipated matchup that is the Winnipeg Jets versus the Buffalo Sabres. I mean, these are two odd teams to make the Stanley Cup final, but I'm all for it, to be honest. Let's go ahead and see who's going to take home that Stanley Cup in year number four, Buffalo or Winnipeg. Who is it going to be? And the Buffalo Sabres are going to absolutely steamroll the Winnipeg Jets in five games in the Stanley Cup final. It was not even close. They absolutely rolled them. And finally, Buffalo is going to get it done with his young core. They have grown up and now are Stanley Cup champions. Dalene Thompson, Owen Power, Alex Tuck, they're going to get it done, baby. And I mean, congrats to Buffalo, man. They have not a lot to cheer about over the last like 20 years. They have been dog water, but now they finally have not only made the playoffs, but are going to win the Stanley Cup in year number four. This is the uh, progression, you could say, of the NHL. The young players are coming into old players. Pause. But they are growing up before our eyes and taking home that Stanley Cup. There's Kyle Ocpozo, somehow is the captain of Buffalo. For the entire playoffs, Nikolai Ehlers is going to lead in goals with 13 and points with 28. Followed by Kyle Connors, 27. Josh Morrissey had 27. Mark Shifley, Winnipeg was, I don't know how they didn't win it. I mean, they had four guys going absolutely off. Dow Lean had 25 points. Jeff Skinner, 24. Tage Thompson is going to have a season for himself. The Ted Lindsay, the Maurice Richard, the Art Ross, and the Hart Trophy. Norris is going to go to Kale McCarr, the Lady Bing to Johnny Hockey, and the Conn Smite to Rasmus Dalene. The Vesna is going to go to Vili Husso, and yet again, the Selkie is going to go to Sean Couturier. And in the final season of the video, the Arizona Coyotes are going to end up being the best team in the NHL, winning 59 games. That is absolutely crazy. Followed by Toronto. Edmonton was up 
Sculptor, Washington, Boston, and Anaheim. Now let's take a look at the bottom of the NHL. We have Montreal, St. Louis, Pittsburgh, and Calgary. The Devils were also down there as well. That's kind of surprising. But never in a million years did I ever think I'd ever see the Arizona Coyotes being the best team in the entire NHL. Jason Robertson is going to lead the NHL in points with 117. Followed by Matthews is 115. Tage Thompson was up there. Connor Bedard had 110. Kaprizov and Pasta had 108 apiece. Connor McDavid had a comeback season, I guess, 54 goals and 107 points. Jack Eichel was up there. Tomas Hurdle, who's also a 99 overall, had 106 points. Austin Matthews is going to lead in goals with 63. Followed by Robo, 62. Eichel had 59. Kaprizov had 56. Tage Thompson was up there. Bedar, Tomas Hurdle had 54. Now for defenseman Drew Doughty, yet again, is going to lead the way with 105 points. Followed by Kale McCarr's 90. Rowan Yossi was up there. Quinn Hughes and Vince Dunn, who had 68, or actually 78, my bad. Now for goalies, Linus Allmark's going to have the most wins with 43. Followed by Veg Melka's 41. Stuart Skinner had 38. Connor Hellebuck, 38. And for shutouts, Veg Melka and Connor Hellebuck are each going to tie at five apiece. Sam Sonoff and Grubauer, Shesterkin, Lukanen, and Carter Hart all had four. And in the Stanley Cup final, we have the Dallas Stars versus the Red Wings. The Red Wings finally doing something good throughout the video. They dominated their way through the playoffs. I mean, beat New York in five games, beat Toronto in five games, Boston in six games. They are ready for Dallas in the Stanley Cup final. Let's see who goes on and takes home the final Stanley Cup of the video. And the Red Wings are going to choke in the Stanley Cup final in game seven to the Dallas Stars after they were up 3-1 in the series. But in three straight closeout games, they're going to no-show and the Dallas Stars are going to go on and take home the Stanley Cup. God damn, Detroit. You disappointed the city. You disappointed the fans. And more importantly, you disappointed me. I was actually happy for the Red Wings, but they're not even going to get it done. So what am I supposed to do now? Oh my God, Detroit. So disappointing. Joe Pavelski is going to take home the Smythe for Dallas. Six goals and 29 points in the playoffs. And there it is, the Stanley Cup being presented in Detroit, but not for the Red Wings because they choked harder than a porn star does in any of her videos as Jamie Benn and the Dallas Stars are going to lift that Stanley Cup for the very first time in his career. I believe Dallas does have a Stanley Cup in their franchise's history though, so I'm not too surprised. Dallas is one of the better teams as well. Now for the entire playoffs, Jason Robertson is going to have 18 goals and 29 points, but somehow Joe Pavelski is going to win the con Smythe. I mean, 18 goddamn goals in the same amount of points, but somehow Joe Pavelski was more valuable to the team. Lucas Raymond was up there with 24. Sagan had 23. Larkin, 23. JT Comfer had 23 points. Austin Matthews is going to take home the Ted Lindsay, the Maurice Richard, and the Hart Trophy, while Jason Robertson is going to take home the Art Ross. The Norris, yet again, is going to go to Drew Doughty, the Lady Bing to Connor Bedard, and the Con Smite to Joe Pavelski. The Vesna is going to go to Ilya Sorokin, and that is going to do it for this video, boys. If you enjoyed the video, make sure you leave a like and subscribe to the channel. Also, let me know in the comments if you were surprised by any of the Stanley Cup winners. I mean, to be honest, I was kind of surprised when Edmonton won it in year number one. Also, let me know in the comments if we ship Trevor Zegers and Dixie D'Amelio. What is going on there? I don't even know. Regardless, thank you all for watching. And until next time, don't be silly. Wrap your willy.